pay attention to the subtle ways in your life that you reject things, the subtle ways you say no, the subtle ways that the universe is trying to bring you love or trying to bring you anything, right? Because everything is love. Bring that conscious awareness to the moments where someone or something is trying to give you something, whatever it may be. Everything that the universe offers us, approach it with the perspective that it is a gift of love. Because it is. Even the challenges in our life are gifts of love. When we can really understand, understand, internalize the truth, capital T, that everything is an act of love, even if it doesn't feel good, it completely changes our reality. When we choose not to reject that love and accept it, we integrate that into the collective and we say, yes, more love, let's continue this. Welcome home to, to the, the Loving Consciously, Consciously Podcast. My name is Amaris. And my name is Eric. And if you are like us, nobody, nobody taught, taught you, you how, how to love. love. We are best friends and life partners here to vulnerably and authentically share our seven-year journey to unconditional love. Our mission is to help you learn how to love consciously in all of your relationships so we can journey together towards a more effective, intentional, and fulfilling way of giving and receiving love. Loving, Loving Consciously. Consciously. Together, we have overcome neurodivergence, mental health, addiction, pregnancy loss, infidelity, and grief. After six years, the lack of knowledge on how to heal or love each other through these challenges led to our separation. After us both spiritually awakening and recommitting, we built our new conscious partnership founded on unconditional love and a commitment to personal growth. Thank you for joining us as we put it all out there to show you the duality of our love's pain and beauty. And remind you that you have both the capacity to love consciously and the power to always, always choose love. Namaste and welcome back to the Loving Consciously podcast. We have been away for three weeks and we have missed you all so much. Today we are going to talk about receiving love, which has been a major theme in our life these last few weeks. And honestly, I really wanted to call this episode Learning to Love Yourself. But we're really going to get into the act of receiving and how it manifests as not receiving and how we can start to move into a place of being open to receiving all of the love and abundance and joy that the universe and our loved ones have to give us. Before we get started, I want to start with a beautiful Rumi quote that I think so accurately sums up this episode. Your task is not to seek love but merely to seek and find all of the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Looking at the last three weeks of our life, we have been going through it. We have been going through a lot of movement. We've been going through a lot of massive growth and it's been really wild. We spent two of those three weeks in New Mexico. We hit all of the major cities, went to all of the parks there got to explore Taos, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, Las Cruces, Carlsbad, White Sands, the caverns were out of this world. That is a spiritual experience in and of itself. And then we came into Texas and spent a few days in Big Bend, which was really surprising. It helped me fall back in love with the desert. And we had some really beautiful mystical experiences there as well. And we have been in Austin for the last few days. And that has been pretty transformative because we have a lot of community here and we got to participate in a live Breathe with Cannabis event. These events that we've been doing virtually for almost six months now and we got to meet our spiritual teacher, the person that we graduated from his 4D university. We got to meet these people that we've been interviewing on our podcast, Ryan and Christopher, and we got to be in conscious community and it was the second most powerful plant medicine ceremony I've participated in after ayahuasca, to be in a room of almost 100 conscious people with this sacred, consciously grown cannabis doing this very beautiful and sacred breath work was powerful. Between the full moon and all of the things that are going on in the world and being back on the road full time and some challenges in our relationship really around receiving love, we have been really just honoring our need for space. That's what's been going on with us. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that we started a 
deep dive Gene Keys course a few weeks ago, actually three weeks ago, and that has probably been one of the more transformative things we've done on our multi-year spiritual journey thus far. It is really, really happening for us. It is unlocking and downloading and transmissioning things in our DNA at explosively rapid rates and integrating and processing that is vital and has proven to take a lot of time and energy. And then you have all of the energy things that are going on in the world. I mean, it is just, to use our our friend's words, potent right now. And we are on this human experience with you all. And so if you're listening to this and you are going through it, going through ascension symptoms, going through massive releases and upgrades and downloads and growth and change, we are right there with you. We are feeling it and we are sending you so much love. Thank you for that beautiful intro. It has been a season of looking inward these last three weeks. And in doing so, you know, like Amara said, we're on the journey with you. We're not on the other side. There is no other side. We are all walking this path together. Whatever that looks like for you, please make sure that you're taking care of yourself, that you're drinking lots of clean, healthy water, eating some delicious and nutritious foods that are also organic and healthy for you, and that you are taking care of your mental and your spiritual well-being. As we navigate this path alongside you, this topic of receiving love has just continued to come up as a pattern in our relationship. It's one that we have addressed and then continue to have more opportunities to address it on deeper and deeper and deeper levels as God and the universe just keeps bringing this lesson back around for us, especially during this time as we prepare for the eclipse and any energies that are still stuck in our body that are working their way out, they are coming to a head with extreme potency. And so it's been just a beautiful and powerful and also messy process kind of unpackaging what's there. Yeah, beautiful, powerful, and messy, (laughs) pretty much. So moving into receiving love, two very simple words. Like I said, we we kind of battled through this title because it is that simple, but it's so much bigger than that. And we, as we always say on this podcast, as we say in our intro, nobody teaches us how to love, right? They tell you, oh, giving and receiving and balance and woo, and that's all great. Does anyone ever sit you down and actually tell you, here's how you do it? Here's what it means. Here's what these deeply nuanced and complex things mean. And so we're going to do our best to do justice to that today. The most important thing to start with here is receiving is equally as important as giving. They go hand in hand. One cannot exist without the other. And so two really big call outs here is balance and circulation. So starting with balance, everything in the world is balance, right? We want to have a balanced lifestyle, a healthy balance of work and play, a healthy balance in our diet, etc. And the way that we give and receive energy is no different. If I could take it back to its simplicity, remember that love is energy. Everything is energy, but love especially is energy, energy of the highest and purest form. Giving love is wonderful, right? That feels great to love others. Now, receiving love, I think people have more of a tough time with that. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. That's not specifically what this episode is for, but I really want to get your mind thinking about balance and start asking yourself where on the scale, where on the sliding scale, if you will, one side's giving and one side's receiving and the center is balanced, like where on that scale are you? Are you giving more than you're receiving? Are you receiving more than you're giving? Because when we're out of balance in that energy exchange, it is going to manifest in uncomfortable and challenging situations and feelings and not bring the result, the end result that every human I believe on this planet is looking for, which is to give and receive love. What you were speaking to earlier about this uncomfortability that tends to be present in our society around receiving love, especially us personally and in our relationship, receiving love has been a challenge because It can be very uncomfortable when we've been raised in a society that tells you that you have to sacrifice and that essentially showing your love for others 
is that sacrifice of your personal preference or your experience. And in reality, receiving love is just as important as giving it. When we receive love, we empower others who are in the process of being in that giving state to see that through. Whenever we have resistance to receiving things, receiving compliments, receiving whatever it may be, we are blocking that flow of energy from coming through. Absolutely. And that comes back to that second point, which is circulation. Everything of energy in life is circulating. And so when we are not in a healthy balance of giving and receiving, there's a block to that flow. There's a block to allowing that to come in. And the energy of love comes in in a lot of different ways. And we're going to get into that a little bit later to really get you thinking maybe in ways that you haven't before about how others and the universe tries to show love. Most importantly, just remember, receiving love is just as important as giving it. And even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's something that's not maybe second nature to you, it's definitely something that is necessary to work on developing a healthy relationship with. When we are not receiving love, we are communicating to the universe that, number one, you don't want the thing, right? Like, if someone or something or the universe tries to in some way show you love and you block it, you don't receive it, you're telling the universe effectively, I don't want this. Even though, obviously, deep down, you do want it because it's what we all want at our core is to, is to receive love and feel love and be love and be in the energy of love. But you're telling the universe, no, I don't want that thing. So it's, it's sending out an energetic frequency, a signal that is blocking the very thing that you do want, which I feel like is just the predicament of the human condition, right? Yeah, I mean, at least in my experience, it always comes down to this feeling of unworthiness and not being able to receive things because there's an underlying subconscious belief that those things aren't for you. And so when God or the universe is trying to give you something and we say, oh, no, 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 I, it's okay. I, you don't need to do that for me. You know, for example, you love to give me the last bite of whatever snack we're having. And almost every time without fail, when it's offered to me, I look at you and I say, no, 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 you have it. What's happening there is just like you mentioned, there's a block in the energy and I am preventing myself from receiving the love that you are attempting to give. Thus signaling to the universe, no, I do not want this thing. When instead, if we decide, yes, let's receive this, let's be in a state of gratitude and receiving love, you unlock that circle. You allow the other person to channel that love through them receive it into you and then now you have that love to be able to give back out into the universe yeah that's such a beautiful example of circulation and how that process works and the second part here that you tell the universe when you don't receive something is that you need more lessons you need more lessons to be ready for this thing you need more lessons to integrate and embody this thing in this case receiving love and i know for me I definitely see this play out in my life when I am not receiving or I am rejecting something almost immediately, usually instantly, a lesson is brought forward to say, hey, er, you're out of alignment here. Let me bring forward this uncomfortable thought, emotion, experience to remind you that I, the universe, energy, God, your partner, whatever it is, am trying to give you the thing that you want and you are resisting it, rejecting it, whatever it may be. And so here's another opportunity to learn and remind you that you do want the thing. Yeah, and those lessons can be subtle. It's very much a stark reminder of truth. You know, the truth of who we are is that we're all worthy, we're all lovable, we're all meant to be freely giving and receiving love in balance and in circulation. And so when we are not embodying that and we're not in practice, the universe will self-correct. It will say, okay, this person is unbalanced, they're not receiving love, so let's start sending them catalysts to essentially push them to remember that they are worthy of that love. 
something you talked about that I'm realizing I didn't mention was when you were talking about how for you not receiving the love comes from a place of shame. And I just want to give my experience to that because it's a very different experience and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to your shame and a lot of people may be able to relate to my experience. But for me, it's more of a receiving that love puts me in a state where I am vulnerable and then as such could get hurt. And so I typically tend to notice when I am rejecting love, especially when someone is trying to, not so much from the universe, but when a person is trying to love me and I start rejecting that, I notice that it's usually because I'm feeling unsafe or I feel like by accepting that I have to let my walls down and let that person in and then I might get hurt, which is a very classic behavior and tactic that uh, still, you know, all these years of healing work later manifests in my life. And so... I have to be really mindful of that. It really just comes to show that there are so many different human experiences. We're going to get into this more towards the end of ways that we don't receive love and how to start receiving love and how really, in essence, it's all about learning to love yourself. Now, on the flip side of all of this, when we are receiving, we're communicating to the universe, yes, give me more. Our kind of thing that we say when we speak out loud to the universe is, yes, yes, universe, more of this. Yes, God, yes, I want this more. It's affirming verbally, energetically, emotionally with your voice, your your sound of creation that, yes, I want this thing. Keeping in mind that receiving love is directly connected to that ability to love yourself. In exploring that, when we look at giving love, spoiler alert, everything is love being given. But some ways that you maybe might not think is giving love. You know, I think traditionally when we think about giving love, we think about like saying the words, I love you. And I know I grew up in a family. I think this is very much a human thing where people have this kind of belief that saying the words, I love you is love. It's not. And we've started to use these words, I think, as a species to just kind of blanket be like, well, of course I love you. I say I love you all the time. The words themselves, this kind of notion that those are the love. And while saying I love you is a way to express love, it is not inherently in itself love, right? They're just words. It is our actions and it is the things that we do that convey our love. And so some common ways that I see that a lot is giving compliments giving gifts. Some people show their love by giving gifts. A really big one is giving time or energy. And I think that we have lost, again, as as a humanity, how valuable time and energy is. It's the most valuable thing that you have. Your time is priceless, especially in this 3D reality where it's finite. And your energy is your everything. That's your life force energy. When you are using your life force energy to give someone else love, to give them time, to give them your attention, intention, whatever it may be, it's the most valuable thing you can give them. And so keep in mind, while someone may not be saying I love you or buying gifts or whatever way you perceive love to be, giving time and energy is a huge way to give your energetic love to someone. You know, you said something really important there in that we have a tendency me especially, to default to the words of, I love you. Oh, of course I love you. As kind of a scapegoat and just saying, okay, I checked the box off. I told you that I love you. That's expressing love. It really comes down to the vibration that you're putting out. It's not about the words that you say. It's about the action. It's about the underlying energy that's below that. And so giving of that time and giving of that energy is one of the most loving things that you can do to be present with somebody to listen to them to honor their experience and say hey i'm here with you that's one of the most loving things that you can do accepting them accepting them unconditionally for who they are loving them in that sense without judgment trusting them trust is something that is very easily broken and when we give our trust to somebody what we're essentially doing is making ourselves vulnerable it is saying i honor you i love you enough 
to make myself open in times when that trust is betrayed, forgiving. Forgiving is another truly loving thing that we can do. It's essentially honoring that person's experience and knowing that whatever was done came from a place of deep suffering for them, right? Because everything in the world is love. And so whenever anybody acts out of that love, out of alignment, it means that they are going through something internally that is knocking them off of that love frequency. And so when we can see that and we, when we can forgive them unconditionally, we put that frequency of love out into the universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some maybe less common ways that love is given, and these ones are fun, and this is definitely, I think, where my wheelhouse is. I love to talk about this stuff because this has all been great, right? But this is all level one. This is level one stuff. I want to take it up a notch and I want to really get your wheels spinning about other ways that love is shown because these ways are, let's say, maybe more in-depth or more conscious ways of showing love and to people who are not yet in that place, they could potentially perceive these things as unloving. And so we really want to come at this from a high perspective, from looking at this of a consciousness lens, right? This is loving consciously not loving loving consciously we are here to raise the bar to encourage you to love deeper more intentional more authentic right and that is consciousness and so it's much more than like saying i love you and buying gifts and giving compliments and accepting someone like those things are great yes they are love and we're gonna go deeper so the first thing here is holding you to your highest self holding you to your values, holding up the mirror, whatever you want to call it, that is an extreme act of love. When you care enough about someone to lovingly hold up the mirror for them, to hold them to their own boundaries, to hold them accountable, that is a very, very deep act of love because you are caring enough about the other person's soul, about their growth, about their word and their values to themselves, to hold that space for them. And that's a difficult thing to do. It's not easy to hold up the mirror for someone. It's not easy to look at your friend and say, hey, you know, you said that you weren't going to do this thing. And holding that up in itself, that is a vulnerable thing to do, right? It puts you in a potential face of conflict. It puts you in the path of their ego, potentially, if they're going to react to it. It can put an energetic strain in the relationship if the other person's not in a place to receive that feedback. What I really want to encourage you to think about is that that is showing love. Caring enough and loving someone to hold them to their highest self is a major part of loving consciously. It is one of the core pillars of our conscious partnership is holding up that mirror and saying, hey, this was the commitment you made for yourself or this is the commitment you made to me and you're not acting in alignment with that right now. That is an incredibly loving act. Though it doesn't feel loving, which you're going to notice is the theme about this list we're going to talk about here. It doesn't feel loving. It is a very, very deep act of love, though. (laughs) That's the funny thing about this list is that it's an extremely loving thing to do. And it's very common for the ego to perceive it as an attack. Because what you're essentially doing is saying, hey, loved one, I see you. I see you acting out of alignment with your highest self and I'm choosing to be courageous and have this potentially uncomfortable situation in order to bring this to light. And you never know how the other person is going to react. It really is up to us as those who are conscious and those who are willing to be courageous and hold up the mirror for our loved ones to hold that frequency and then to not react if our loved one reacts. I cannot stress enough if there's one sentence that you take out of this episode, just because something doesn't feel like love or doesn't present as the way that you want to be loved doesn't mean it's not love. And this is something I really deeply face with a lot of my family system and really just a lot of the people from, you know, my past and people who may not be on a consciousness journey is all the things that feel good and and fun and positive, you know, that's love. And anything that doesn't make me feel good isn't love. And just because your ego is triggered 
or you don't like something doesn't immediately negate the intention behind it, right? Everything's intention. And so if the person came to the table lovingly to say, hey, this thing that you're doing is unloving or hurtful or unkind or out of alignment, it doesn't immediately mean that it's not love. And so if there's one thing you take away today, sit with that, journal on that, meditate on that, pray on that, talk to your loved one, whomever you're in conscious partnership with, and really start to think about what are some of the ways that my loved ones are loving me even though my ego or my mind doesn't want to believe that it's love. Another really big one is setting boundaries. And I know for me early on in my journey many years ago, and just in general, boundaries were difficult. They were triggering. Even talking about them, the word boundaries, right? Setting boundaries is an act of love. It's an act of love for yourself. It's an act of love for others. You know, they may not be in a place where they're able to set and or hold boundaries for themselves. It is a very loving thing to do. It almost never feels that way. In my experience, I personally find boundary setting to feel really tough sometimes. And I get to remind myself that this is an act of self-love to set and hold boundaries for myself. And it's an act of love for the other person to set and hold boundaries so that they can learn how to do this and so that they can see that I love them and myself enough to set healthy boundaries in this relationship. Yeah, and to not participate in unhealthy cycles. When we, as conscious individuals, set boundaries and say we're not going to participate in unhealthy behaviors, that can be really activating for the other person if their ego is relying on that cycle to get energy or to distract from the growth that's meant for their soul. And so it immediately becomes a threat. It's a courageous thing to set a boundary. It's courageous for yourself. It's courageous for them because you're telling the universe, no, this energy is no longer welcome in my life. And by extension, whomever you're in conscious partnerships life, we have the ability to break the cycle. And one of the biggest tools that we have is setting boundaries, honoring ourselves, because when we honor ourselves, we then have the love to give to others. If we continue breaking boundaries for ourselves, how can we honor other people's boundaries? Yeah, we'll definitely do an episode on boundaries one day because this is an incredibly deep topic. I would only add to that that boundaries are not the other person's responsibility. And this was the ultimate lesson that I finally integrated this year was I would set boundaries and then expect the other person to follow them. And then when they didn't follow them, it was like, you broke my boundaries. And when I really, truly understood and internalized and integrated that the boundary is my responsibility to hold, everything changed. And so keep that in mind. We'll definitely do an episode on that. Another really big one is speaking truth. And again, courage, right? This can be a really uncomfortable experience, especially if you're not used to it. When you speak your truth and or speak truth about or to the other person, that is a huge act of love. It is incredibly loving, probably one of the more loving things that you can do, especially for yourself. You are giving truth and authenticity to the universe. You are speaking the vibration of truth, capital T. And when we speak truth, our own truth and also just universal truth, one of the core universal truths being that of love and that all of creation is love and God is love and love is all that there is, we are loving and we are giving that other person love. And again, that may not always feel positive. Speaking truth may not always be rainbows and puppy dogs and unicorns. It's still loving, though. Speaking truth really gets down to the core that without truth and radical honesty, there cannot really be an authentic relationship. Absolutely. And everything in love, everything in conscious partnership comes right back to authenticity. If you are not living your authentic truth, speaking your authentic truth, holding them to their highest self, setting boundaries, all of these things, forgiving, loving, accepting, etc. We are out of alignment. We are out of alignment with truth, with love, with authenticity, and there will never be a pure and authentic relationship based on that. Exactly. 
And a final way that you can truly, truly love another is by first learning to love yourself. Because when we learn to accept ourselves, to forgive ourselves, to trust ourselves, to honor our boundaries, everything that we just talked about doing for another and showing love, if you can first learn to do that for yourself and practice that, honor that, just like riding a bike over and over and over again until you get it, you can then apply that to anybody else in your community. You can learn how to love others by sitting in inquiry and understanding, okay, what, what am I feeling? How am I not loving myself? And then making changes to honor and love yourself. It comes back to kind of one of my phrases, one of my favorite phrases these days, which is all love is self-love, right? Everything is a reflection of us. Everyone is our mirror. We are all one. We're all connected. And when you love yourself, you love everyone else inherently. You give everyone else permission to love themselves, to feel your love, to receive your love. You give yourself permission to receive love. When you are in a state of loving yourself, when someone tries to give you love, you are going to gladly receive that love. That's wonderful. That's comfortable. Yes, universe, more of this, more love. And so all of these things just keep breeding more love. This feels like a really good time to mention I had recorded an episode on the Tiny Hat Energy podcast titled All Love is Self-Love. I'd invite you to check it out if this is resonating or your journey of self-love is something you're exploring. However, I also want to share that, you know, as a sister podcast to the show, I have decided to end that podcast. I recorded my last episode last week where I went into detail about why I'm doing that and what is happening. Long story short, if you don't check it out, I am transitioning out of this personal show talking about myself into a podcast that partners with my newly formed ministry and really talking about God, the universe, metaphysics, religion, spirituality, all of these things from a higher consciousness, all-inclusive perspective. That podcast, the Loving with Grace podcast, will be premiering here soon and I invite you all along on that journey, but I just wanted to provide that little bit of update because we do plug the the tiny hat podcast here quite a lot and so that's been another transition that i've been going through as i'm navigating the massive life's work jinky 22 of grace and all that it is bringing into my life getting back into today's content we were thinking a lot about some of the common ways that we don't receive love and then we started thinking about some of the kind of sneakier ways This is where I think you and I thrive a lot is we really can kind of see some of the nuances and shadows because ego's sneaky. (laughs) You say that a lot. It's very sneaky. And there are a lot of ways that we don't receive love that we probably wouldn't even perceive aren't receiving love. And so these come directly from downloads that we've had of, oh, wow, that's like directly rejecting love. And it goes right back into that thesis or that idea we've shared here today that like everything is love being given so on that argument you could hypothesize that anything you reject is rejecting love one of those ways is when someone offers you something and you decline this can be a compliment a gift a kindness they offer to let you go in front of them in line in traffic to open the door you know this can be a plethora of ways i witness this every single day in society countless times Someone offers someone something else, you know, even a smile, a hello, whatever it may be, and the person says, no, thank you, no, thank you, I can't accept that, I don't need that, that is declining love, that is rejecting love. And so this is, number one, a really big way that you can start to bring some conscious awareness to your life of when someone or something is offered to you, is your default mode network to be like, no, 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 thank you. This goes right back to your example from earlier about like, when we're sharing a snack and I say, here you go, you can have the last bite. And Eric's default response used to almost always be, no, 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 I can't do that. You take it. Er, That is rejecting love. That was me like genuinely and authentically being like, I want him to have the last bite, right? Like love, I love him. I want him to have this. So I'm going to give it to him and him immediately saying no. And it's like this instant wall of rejection. And it doesn't mean that it comes from a negative place, right? These are the subconscious and un 
subconscious ways in which we reject love. And so the point here is to get you kind of thinking about like, wow, you know, someone like was really kind and offered to let me go in front of them in line or in traffic. And I said, no, 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 you go, please. It's fine. When that, they were trying to give you that. And if you had just received that and said, you know, thank you, I received that and taken that kindness from them, that love cycles, right? And that tells the universe, yes, I want more of this. Right. And you communicate to the other person that it is okay to receive love as well. As they give their love and they see that it is received, it encourages them to continue giving love for one. But two, when we choose not to reject that love and accept it, we integrate that into the collective and we say, yes, more love. Let's continue this. It spreads in the most beautiful way because when love is given to you, one of the first reactions that we have once we've actually received the love and accepted it and integrated it into us is to then give love. It's this passing of the baton back and forth. And so I would encourage you if, like Amara said, your default mode network is to reject something that's given to you, to sit with that. If next time somebody offers you something and you feel that clenching in your gut, that resistance to, ooh, this is uncomfortable. Why is this person freely giving something to me? This Now I feel in the back of my head, I now owe them something. What What is it that comes up for you? What is that resistance? Try and identify it. And then as you sit with it and as you contemplate it, put into practice something that would flip that around and would allow you to re- receive that love instead. Yeah, I love that. Another thing here is when somebody inquires about us and we don't vulnerably share, giving your vulnerability, as we will talk about in our next and final section on how to start receiving love, giving your vulnerability is giving your love. It is giving your trust. It is giving your authentic self and being in that space with that person. And so when somebody is asking you, like, how are you doing? Or would you like to talk about it? And we go into that shutdown, no, I'm fine, or no, it's mine to deal with, I don't want to burden you, don't worry about it, I'll figure it out, whatever the the mind says, right, that is that same energetic wall of rejection of this person loves you and wants to know how you're doing. And when you decline to engage in that, you are declining that love. Again, doesn't mean you intend to do that, right? Of course you want to feel love. It just means that that is energetically what's being communicated to the universe. And this goes hand in hand with the last one here, which is when someone offers us a reflection and we reject it, right? This goes into that point we talked about earlier that it doesn't always look and feel positive. Giving and receiving love is not always wrapped in rainbows and butterflies. Love is very complex. And so if somebody is offering you a reflection about you or maybe something you may be doing or how they may be feeling and you decline it or engage with it negatively, which we're all human, we all have an ego, it happens, nothing can't be come back from, it is rejecting that love. It is rejecting this person using their energy to say, hey, I'm offering a reflection here. So all of this to say, these are just ways to start thinking, start really getting into that subconscious, that unconscious, bringing conscious awareness to the ways that you love and how you receive love. This last little section here is how can we start receiving love? We are big proponents on teaching people how to do these things, going step by step, methodical to break this down step by step. So that when we get to this last thing, we're not just coming on here for 10 minutes and saying, here's how you receive love. It's really bringing this higher awareness and understanding because we don't typically consciously think about these things. I mean, some of us do, right? If you're really deep on your spiritual path or your consciousness path, maybe you do. However, the collective doesn't. And so it's all to encourage you to start thinking about these things more or start thinking about them if you're not thinking about them. A really big way that we can receive love is being vulnerable, opening yourself up to vulnerability, being open to feedback, being open to people giving you things, being open to the universe giving you things. Love and abundance is your birthright. It is what your natural state is. Your natural state is one of love. You are a creation of love. Everything is love. 
Love is in everything, even if it's hard to see. And so being vulnerable to that, being open to letting yourself be seen, setting boundaries, speaking your truth, every single thing we've said here today is an act of vulnerability. And when you open yourself up to being vulnerable, you start receiving love. It, they go hand in hand. It, it happens without effort. Imagine trying to receive love through a giant shell. We must first open ourselves up. We must disarm ourselves and allow that love to come in. And sometimes that can feel like death. Showing your authentic self opens you up to potentially being hurt. And the truth is, yeah, it does. And the more of us that take the vulnerable step to opening ourselves up, the more that we can show each other that it is safe here. It is safe when all of us disarm our shells and stopped acting out of ego defense and reactions. And so take that bold step, be vulnerable, open yourself to love and love others. Absolutely. And right back into something we've touched on a couple of places in this episode from the very get-go is cultivate that self-love. Loving yourself. Start to develop that relationship with yourself. Start to heal that inner child. Start to connect with your highest self. Whatever you do to cultivate self-love, do that. Do that as much as possible and consistently because loving yourself is loving everyone else. It is so easy to go out into society today and love people effortlessly and unconditionally when I'm in a state of self-love. If I'm in a state of dysregulation or I'm in a state of ego or not being in the vibration of loving myself, I immediately start projecting that onto other people. It's like an instant token to projection. And so cultivate that self-love. Also, practice saying yes. We are very much a species of no. Practice saying yes and thank you. Our favorite thing to say is I receive that. Give gratitude. When someone does something kind, when someone offers you something for free, when Someone offers to let you go in front of them. When someone offers you a compliment, whatever it may be, thank you. I received that. Yes, yes, universe, more of this. Start building and breathing the energy of I am grateful because gratitude invites love. Gratitude builds love. Gratitude is love. It's a form of love. Say yes. Say thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for bringing this topic up because gratitude really is a cornerstone of love. It's that resounding drum that pounds these vibrations of abundance and love into the universe, creating these ripples of giving and receiving. Creating ripples of giving and receiving, bringing it right back to circulation and balance and all of these things we've talked about today. We'd be remiss if we did not provide one last reminder Pay attention to the subtle ways in your life that you reject things, the subtle ways you say no, the subtle ways that the universe is trying to bring you love or trying to bring you anything, right? Because everything is love. Bring that conscious awareness to the moments where someone or something is trying to give you something, whatever it may be, and see how you respond to that. Because it's through conscious awareness and it's through self-inquiry and it's through paying attention that we can start to break patterns, that we can start to analyze and make different choices. Yeah, and the universe will not always give you love in a box wrapped with beautiful wrapping paper and a note and a flower that says, here's some love. The most important thing that we can do is approach every situation that is put in our path, everything that the universe offers us, approach it with the perspective that it is a gift of love. Because it is. Even the challenges in our life are gifts of love. They show us where we are misaligned. They teach us how to love ourselves. They teach us how to break cycles, shed parts of us that don't resonate with the truth of reality. And so approach everything with that lens. I don't think we could end on a more beautiful perspective in closing. 
and I don't think we could more appropriately convey conscious love than what you just said. Everything is love. And it's also in the challenges. It's also in the painful catalysts. It's also in the lessons that love is shown. And this is where grace comes in because grace is divine love, right? At its ultimate expression. And when we can really understand, understand, internalize the truth, capital T, that everything is an act of love, even if it doesn't feel good, it completely changes our reality. When you can start to look at your tough moments, your lessons, your catalysts, whatever you call them, as opportunities for growth and as an act of love or grace or mercy from God, source, creator, whatever you believe in, you really crack the code. You crack the code to, can I still be in the frequency of love? Can I still be in the frequency of gratitude even in these difficult situations? And so yes, retweet a thousand times. I echo that sentiment. Even if it's challenging, it's still an act of love because that challenge is providing you the blessing, the opportunity, and the encouragement to grow. And so we encourage you, we welcome you, we invite you to receive this love today. If you're listening to this, we love you so much. We're sending you so much love. We are over here fighting the good fight in this spiritual warfare. And every day, you know, we don't always get it right. We get it right most of the time. But we are right here alongside you working to receive love. The truth is, it has gotten really easy to receive love from other people. It's gotten really easy to receive love from strangers. And it really kind of all comes back to this relationship and to us working to receive love from each other. Because relationships, especially romantic relationships, but any conscious relationship is our greatest catalyst for growth. And so I leave you with this reminder that in your conscious partnerships, be it romantic or not, your relationships with your friends, your family, your loved ones, remember that the ultimate goal is love. It's to love consciously. It's to return to love. It's to choose love. Always, always, always choose that love. And one of the best ways that you can do that is to start receiving it.